Oh my god, mm -hmm. it worked. It actually worked. <clears throat> the stream deck, that is. I've been working on this stream deck for a little bit. And it's uh, finally coming along, I guess. <laughs> I don't really know. Look, my hair's in a ponytail. Crazy. It's been uh, one year since you looked at me. You know, whatever. Uh, November 1st of last year is when I buzzed my head. So my hair grows ponytail length in about a year and a month. About 13 months. I'm sure it'll pop out here pretty soon with the fan on, but no big deal. Uh, so originally today, I had planned to uh, write some death gaze on the Aristides and to have the session open. We were all going to hang out. And then my buddy Tyler said he's getting off work really early today, so he's going to come over around 1.30. We're going to go get some lunch, and then we're going to start some Never Breath streaming. So tonight we'll have Never Breath. And today for Kardashev, it's going to be a short stream. What I thought might be kind of interesting is if we uh, took the acoustic guitar and sort of deconstructed some of Kardashev's music to see what would fit best in acoustic format. So I hope that uh, those of you that are here, uh, which quick shout out to DrawCab, 2D, Matthew, and DVR, and those of you who are lurking, um, <clears throat> for those of you that are here, if you have any recommendations, um, I would love to hear which songs you think would translate well onto the acoustic. <laughs> And uh, for right now, I'm only going to be using the classical. I'm not going to use the steel string, um, mostly because I don't want to get it out and make country tunes. I think it might be interesting to kind of look at it through a classical lens. So we're going to get some tuning in here really quick while everybody gets situated. Oh, no. Does anybody here use a snark? Sometimes when I use my snark, it doesn't want to tune. It'll go into like this standby mode, and I don't know how to wake it up. to have a blue snark now I have a black one the blue one was eaten by my uh, my old roommate's dog <laughs> so I think we left it on the couch before we went to get lunch one day the snark that is and the dog just was like oh a chew toy I don't know what's appealing about hard plastic and metal but uh, the dog found it interesting so he ate it Wow, Matthew Brown with a $2 donation. It says, play Freebird. Matthew, I don't know Freebird. A Vagabond's Lament would be beautiful on acoustic. Oh, Greg, that's an interesting take. Matthew says, I love you, Nico. Oh, thanks, dude. Appreciate you. Thanks for swinging by and saying hi, man. Love you, too. Thanks for being here. Uh, so let's see. Something that I was thinking about the other day was um, the first song that comes to mind for me is Lavender Calligraphy. Uh, this is the most recent song that I've written that was actually originally intended for this guitar. And the reason that we didn't use it is because everybody thought that the song was better off without an acoustic section. So the section that, um, as an example, uh, which song is it? It's not Silvered Shadows, it's whatever is after that. What's after Silvered Shadows? I have to pull up my Spotify. <laughs> I haven't learned all of these. Valheim Forever! Yes, Matt, Valheim Forever, dude. The Valheim game has been super duper fun. Last night we killed Motor, got the Motor ability. Next up is the... Um, I think it's the Troll King. Yeah, it's the Troll King next. All right, Kardashev, Liminal Right, Apparitions and Candlelight. Yeah, thanks, Brody. Hey, Brody, what's up, baby? So Apparitions and Candlelight originally has this section. So it has that, and then Mark does like the 
can I be replaced with love? Like that whole stuff. So that was originally done on acoustic. And originally it was written to open the song. Those of you who are signed up on our website with the Enlisted Traveler program, you can go back in time about a year and you can hear that demo of that song. So something you're interested in, kardashevband.com, sign up there. Brody says, Apparitions in Candlelight is after Silvered Shadows. I always thought that this sounded like a classical piece. Yeah, originally it was written like that. It was written by our, our uh, singer, Mark. I think the other thing was that uh, it sounded too much like an Opeth song, so we took it off of this as well. There were a bunch of factors that everybody sort of suggested. They said, hey, it sounds too much like Opeth, or the song would be better if it didn't start acoustically, or this section wouldn't sound as good if it was on acoustic. And so a bunch of those decisions just kind of came together, and ultimately we, uh, we got rid of it. In all honesty, starting on one of your next songs with a short acoustic section would be amazing. You know, Matthew, I, I thought that it might sound cool too, a good change of pace. Um, and every time we've done it, it just doesn't execute properly. The other one was Lavender Calligraphy. A lot of tune. originally started here like this and what I had done is I had written a, a two-minute uh, classical guitar piece that turns into this section I'll just play it for you um, so the original composition is along those lines. So all of that stuff was already written, recorded, prepared. But when we listened back to it, we thought that it detracted too much from Lavender Calligraphy as a song. And at that point in the writing process, we hadn't really figured out that we wanted to have these little, 
these little intervals of music where a narration could occur. So this got abandoned and we, we got rid of all of that. We just now have the beginning of lavender calligraphy. Hey, Greg and Connor. What's up, dudes? Uh, let me put the chat down here so I can read without crinking my neck. Um, sounds like a lot of time went into that. Uh, so yeah, that so that piece, a lot of pieces that I do on this are a result of a lot of time spent. But the time spent is just kind of in my leisure. Um, there are a couple people who can attest to my ability to grab a guitar, specifically a, a classical, uh, sit in a chair and just like lose myself in playing. Um, that's just kind of how I sort of reflect on life as I sit and I play. So a lot of these pieces that I write on here come from that. They just come from that. It's almost like habitual at this point, you know? Death metal and shoegaze. <laughs> yeah, that was the idea anyway. I got my pillow today. Cool, Slee. Hopefully it looks good. You should post a picture in the uh, Discord if you can. That'd be really cool. Um, there's a new thing that I'm kind of working on. Good luck with that one. Three, two, ten. If someone can pull that off, bless you. We can do it here. Yeah. Weather. Hi, Weather. How are you doing today? I hope you're having a good day. I see you're pretty active in the Discord right now, so I uh, appreciate you hanging out and saying hi. I'm looking at all of these uh, discussions about cars now that Levi has finished their third driving session. That's super cute. Uh... Slee, let me do that real quick, using it for a cushion or a couch pillow. Tight, yeah. Uh, you can see that I have I have our pillows. <laughs> um, I actually kind of came up with a decision. So, do you see how the bearing of shadows pillow on the far right is kind of frumpy? I don't know if the word frumpy is accurate, but that's the thing. Stretch. What up, Bob? Oh, let's get stretching, baby. Oh, everybody, stretch it out. Stretch it out. You know what it's about. Um. <laughs> So I decided with this pillow here that I think the back image should be upside down so that when you turn it over, you can kind of like distribute the frumpiness a little bit better. So I think I'm gonna make that design choice uh, once I have a minute to get in there. You're making me regret getting rid of my acoustic. Don't regret it, dude. Don't regret it.
through some warm ups. Housekeeping, I fluff your pillows. Housekeeping, I fluff your pillows. I don't know this reference. Is this a quote from a movie? So we already know between sea and sky. trying to think like songs like Beyond Sun and Moon. Can't really do it because it's too riffy. <laughs> Can't really do much with that one. It's very riffy. <clears throat> the campfire edition Connor yeah that one works really well uh, let's take a look let's look at the discography here <clears throat> 
put it on this screen so I can actually see it. So between sea and sky is the easiest one. Oh, snow sleep. Snow sleep works. Um, What's up everybody, Mark with Cardavox Academy here, and also the vocalist of Kardashev, just popping in with this uh, totally not pre-recorded message to say thank you for hanging out in our stream today. Thank you for keeping Nico some company, poor guy, strumming his guitar all alone in that beautifully decorated room. It's it's sad, but it's wonderful. Thank you for watching our stream. Thank you for hanging out. If I made the, uh, an appearance, thank you for saying hey to me and making me feel loved. I appreciate that. Uh, we really appreciate all of you hanging out with us. We appreciate your views and your interest and your time. You know, we, we know that this is your free time and you could be doing a lot of different things with it, but you're choosing to hang out with the Kardashev dudes and that means a lot to us. Now, if uh, you've enjoyed the music that you've heard, if Nico's been writing music, I definitely suggest checking out the Enlisted Traveler program on our website um, that you can see right here. It's got all sorts of cool stuff. Deep dives into the lyrics, deep dives into the composition, why we chose to write songs the way that we did, why Nico chose to uh, do rhythms and to, and to do melodies the way that he did. It even gets a little bit into the mythos of Kardashev and the stories that, multiple stories that we've been telling. And probably the coolest part is that you get to hear clips and even full songs 
of our upcoming albums before anybody else does. You get to listen to the writing process. You get to uh, you know even give us feedback on certain things you like. Maybe even take some sort of uh, some sort of creative uh, creative role in the process. You know, if a lot of people say, "Hey, we love this part, don't like that part," it can certainly help us write the song as well. So definitely check out the Enlisted Travelers program. It is a lot of fun, and it helps us keep doing these streams. It helps Nico continue uh, making these streams and making all this beautiful music. And so we greatly appreciate it. Last but not least. You can check us out on Discord. We've got a Discord. It's a lot of fun. I'm usually in the Cardivox Academy Discord, um, but I do pop into the Cardivchev Cardivchev Discord from time to time. So, anyways, we appreciate all of you. We love all of you. You're wonderful people. Um, and as always, many thanks. Much love. I'm out. Keep hanging out for the stream. Bye. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> My dad came home, and he, sa- he was saying something. He said, blah, blah, blah is here. And I'm like, what? And he's like, blah, blah, blah is here. I'm like, what are you saying? And I went downstairs, and he held up a bag of bagels, and he said, the bagel man is here. So I have a uh, jalapeno and cheddar cheese bagel. Well, this is the rest of it. Mmm. So good. So good. Let's see what this nerd is up to today. Hey, Riley, how's it going, bud? Hope you're doing well, man. I haven't seen you in a minute. This bagel is like fresh as fresh though. Look how squishy it is. Oh. Mmm. Jalapeno, baby. <laughs> Sorry, Riley, your message got suppressed. How, how of, how Italian of your dad. Yeah, very considerate of him to get some bagels, some badgels. Mm. All right. So looking through the discography for songs that we can turn into, um, like acoustic renditions. Um, The Approaching of Atonement is mostly a soundscape, so we can't do that one. Silvered Shadows... That is a riffy song. Um, See how it like doesn't really translate too well. If I did the chords, it might work. See, it's um, starts on D. I don't like that D on the acoustic. And then it goes to the uh, A sharp, which is actually, yeah, here. So we go. It's after the A sharp. It's a D A sharp. It's like. So we could do. Sounds out of tune up here.
think the D is a minor. No, it just has a weird voicing. I wonder if we could find the D somewhere else. Major position. is that when I play the full chord it should actually be it's this augmented position it should be there Daddy. Right a tune again. This stupid G string. To be fair, this uh, this guitar doesn't get a whole lot of use these days. I only really play it when I want to like zone out and chill, you know what I mean? Tune that grill. I'm gonna tune the grill, dude. Ugh. I tried to replace the uh, battery in here twice today, and all of the 9 volt batteries in my house are uh, dead. Not dead, but like the even the ones that we keep in the drawer, where you keep nine volts, even those were bad. <laughs> it's so weird. It's like, why do we have these? All right, let's try that now. So it should be. So like that's definitely But then we get into like the uh the, the this part Oh no and then we do the So that's the thing about like the riffy, the riffy songs, they can be very hard for my brain to, in, to reinterpret through a different medium, that being classical guitar or just steel string guitar. Coin, coin of pure gold in green oceans, or a setting sun sinking into... I don't know how the fuck Mark sings that high. <laughs> this follows a very conventional chord structure, which is fine when you're not riffing it, right? Okay, so that would be apparitions and candlelight, or sorry, silvered shadows. Now, silvered shadows doesn't have like a down moment. Yeah, so the, the whole thing rages through and through. So I don't know, it, it would be very hard to turn Silvered Shadows into a, um, into like a proper acoustic song. 
Powell, hello. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm going to say it Paul just so I don't butcher it. And you did tell me through Discord I could say Paul, so I'm going to say Paul. <laughs> um, I know two words in Polish. I know kobieta, kobieta, and um, meszczyzna. Those are the two words that Tyler taught me. <laughs> so sick. Meszczyzna and kobieta. Or kobieta. So apparitions. We know we can do that one. That one's totally doable. Uh, Dissever. This one's mostly bass and ambience, so that one, that one's less logical. Lavender calligraphy. worried that one of those words would be that. I don't know how to pronounce that. Also, if you're worried about it, I'm not going to say it. Nice try baiting me. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> you're waiting for glue to dry. Uh-oh, is somebody building a guitar? Or a bass, rather? A, ba a bass guitar? <laughs> Alright, so lavender calligraphy we could probably figure out. The blinding threshold Again, this is just this is just like ambience. Not much here to do. Compost grave song. So if we did This changes, this is interesting. So normally it would go in this this G note here, side G, but on the G string. Funky. Ugh. That is a funky ass chord. So, compost grave song, maybe the middle. Yeah. 
Alright, so I'm thinking like, while I'm kind of jamming along here, if it was something along the lines of... The problem is that it's very rhythmic, and in this position... It, I, I have a lot of trouble finding the rhythm to it. Hello, person whose name I can't pronounce. I'm so sorry. Wow, I don't have an electric guitar, so I'm trying to play metal songs on an acoustic guitar. <laughs> you too, huh? <laughs> me also. Look at me go. <clears throat> so let's see here. Um, so compost grave song. We could do the middle. So it starts. Let's try it. Yeah, this song kind of rages also. Next stream, can you uh, only use a ukulele? I don't have one, Kippo, but if you want to ship one to me, I can give you my P.O. box. <laughs> Seller of Ghosts. This one, this one will be kind of interesting because it's... Uh... <laughs> Thank you. 
classical. Something like that. do it because I don't have my seven string. I need a seven string acoustic. That's what I need to do. All right, so Seller of Ghosts, um, we could we could embody the spirit of it with these chords. kind of get the idea the chords are there but the it, it's really about the rhythm and the melody that we want to focus on we want to like see if we can bring that out now admittedly i haven't tried to like really narrow down that melody so if we go forward into seller of ghosts flamenco <laughs> flamenco flamenco uh let's scooch forward sorry that was seller of ghosts and then great song. no seller of ghosts i was right Okay, I was I actually was wrong. It's Glass Phantoms. I gotta be honest, I don't know these names very well. This is the song I'm trying to work on. So we could get into the chords. So let me get into this chord. Right, which the microphone being over here and the camera being over there makes it kind of hard to show everything. But this chord... So that's the chord. For those of you at home who have a guitar, 6, 5, 3, 7. That's the chord. So we do... Um... And then I think it goes down to E. So here we have um, D. And then after the D, we have A sharp. So D, A sharp. And then D again. And then we go to E. to a double E. All right, so that's Glass Phantoms. What's in the middle? So this is a this is a full dissension. This is a full movement through um, a mode um, starting in the highest register. So this is what those hands can do. <laughs> yeah, they can do a little bit. So um, the full dissension is 
15 on A, which is 3, which is a, a A, B, C. So it starts on a C. So we'll start here. I can't go any lower. <laughs> so we're gonna have to do this in a higher register. We might have to do inversions. Blah. Yeah, so it's a full octave movement through the key using um, all of the relative chords. I got a classical guitar recently. Ooh, that's really tight. What kind of guitar did you get? Is it a six string classical? Is it acoustic electric? Um, what's the scale? What's the brand? I'm really curious about it. I used it in an interlude in this black metal album that I'm working on. That's tight as fuck. I hope you share that with people. Grandpa guitars, grandpa's guitars. Yep, that's what we're playing today. <laughs> Just as a reminder to everybody who's here, anybody watching this VOD, it is Tuesday. I do try to stream at noon. I am an hour early today because Tyler's coming over in f one hour and ten minutes uh, so we can do Never Breath tonight. We will be streaming here on the YouTube to do Never Breath since it's basically the same people plus Tyler. Um, so, that being said, if you want to come check that out, please do so. We'll be practicing black metal. Um, okay, so... We went through and we tried Glass Phantoms. That one's going to be kind of hard. Vagabond's Lament has the most potential, I think. You can always tune lower, just put thicker strings. That's true, I could. I would rather just get a seven-string classical. I'm pretty sure Ibanez makes one, but I've, I've never looked into buying one. Let's look it up. Let's see here. Seven-string classical. When you type the letter C, it's the first thing that comes up. So Guitar Center is the first thing that shows up. Sixteen hundred dollars. Sixteen hundred bucks for a Cremona Fiesta, seven string classical guitar. And it's it looks exactly like this guitar, um, but with seven strings naturally. All right, so that's the first thing that comes up there. Then there's Thoman Classical Fusion. A Thoman Classical Fusion. Uh, reject cookies. Goodbye. Three hundred dollars. See, there we go. That's so tight. I'll probably just buy that just so I can be like, I have a seven string classical. That would be freaking sick. I could play every Kardashev song on that thing. That might be kind of fun to try. It's got an acacia neck, um, sepella back and sides. I don't know what that word is. Solid Engelman spruce. Um, doesn't look terrible. It looks freaking sweet though with that seventh string. God dang. That is gnarly. Um, it doesn't come with a case. Uh, it does tell you which strings you can buy though. Godin LTD and Legator made some amazing seven string acoustics. Oh, hi IQ. Really? That's interesting. Uh, I'll text you the interlude on Discord. It's six string Yamaha nylon. Yes, please. Would love to hear that. Uh, it's got 19 frets. You know, this is this is kind of this is kind of gnarly. I know that um, there is an, a luthier here in Arizona who went to Roberto Venn, and he's a friend of my buddy um, Brendan's, and he made an acoustic guitar for Vildiarta, and it's the, what they've been using on their Instagram and stuff. Oh, there's that message. Uh, Rafael Turkowiak also makes a seven string. Oh my god, this thing is gorgeous. All right, I'm getting off. I'm getting off. I'm getting off base here. <clears throat> so, anyways, my point was, if I had a seven-string acoustic, I could do all the things. Uh, let's look at a vagabond's lament. So this this whole song is built around three chords and then a turnaround chord. Uh, those chords are E, I 
I actually don't know if this is E, um, but anyway, this is the chord. So it's... to A. So you have E, C, A. E, C, A. So if we play it down here. It might be A minor. So the thing about this song is that uh, the thing about this song is that it stays in that position throughout, but the the bass gets really jazzy and it gets kind of wacky and does some mode exploration. So uh, with that tune, um, the guitar is kind of simple. There's a certain spot where we do um, we do this like modulation thing in the melody. Um, Do some like modulating in there. Let me see if I can find that point. Yeah, so the modulation is really hard when you're finger picking just because I'm not used to it. Oh, hey, John, what's up, baby? I'm loving the sound of this track. Uh, yeah, that's a Vagabond's Lament, if you want to check it out. But we go. And then eventually 
eventually it goes into sevens. Oof, that is so hard. That's right, actually six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's kind of the that's kind of the build. B A E G A. B B A E G A. Yeah, so it builds up. Yeah, it's something along those lines. Thanks for uh, clarifying those notes, Chris. Appreciate you, baby. I know you know it because you played piano on the record. Everybody check out Draw Cap. He plays piano. Oh, he's so sick. Check him out on uh, TikTok and Instagram. That's where he posts more. <clears throat> um, Nico, do you like games as Mark? I like games. I like games. I like video games. I like board games. I like card games. I like deck builders. I don't like mind games. Uh, yeah, so I do like games. Yeah, I play a ton. We actually have a bunch of games that we play together in the Discord server. John says, Nico is a magician, and I'm not at all surprised by the sound of the songs. By the way, this is one of the most epic parts on the new album. I even cut it as a ringtone on my phone. <laughs> That's so sick. Uh, is it this ending here? You know what's really funny? This is the song that I did the least amount of work on. This was actually written by our bass player, Alex. He came up with like the melodies, he came up with all of the parts and I just helped him piece it together. And then I wrote the ending where Mark effectively sings. Like I, I just wrote that part, everything else was Alex. And he did a great job. So if I were to play this song on acoustic, I might do a, um, a version like this.
right? So I would kind of jam those chords, and then I would bring in the... Dude, the G. The G just sounds rough today. I think uh, that one would be pretty easy to translate. I think that would do well. Beyond the Passage of Embers. I don't think this song would translate to acoustic. I've, I've not personally heard Doom on an acoustic guitar. If y'all can recommend a Doom band who plays acoustic guitars, I will listen to it. And I'm not talking about like Southern Doom, like, um, like Deathbed Blues. I'm not talking about that kind of Doom. Because just thinking about these chords... Yeah, because the chords are like this. But they're all up a string. And then we're missing the low octave, which is here. Peter says, Daylight Dies has some nice acoustic parts on tracks. Actually, let me turn you guys on to something crazy. What about acoustic piano? Yeah, Chris, that would be awesome. Let me turn you on to something crazy. If you like um, Kill Switch Engage, there is a YouTube uh, channel slash video called Chill Switch Engage. And uh, it's all p uh, piano versions of Kill Switch Engage songs, and they are fucking awesome. I'm sure you'll recognize this one. This music is incredible. Highly recommend it. I listen to this regularly. So uh, they, he goes through and he does a ton of their songs. He has, just on this one video, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 songs. He does 12 Kill Switch Engage songs on here. His name's Sean Townsend. Before I met uh, Chris, who's Draw Cab, I actually emailed this guy. And I said, hey, I listen to this album all the time. Would you be interested in doing this with uh, Kardashev music? And he said, I'm so sorry to tell you that I'm way too busy to take on new projects. And I said, okay, thanks anyway. So that was either a nice, your music sucks, fuck you, get away from me. Or he was being sincere. And he was just like, hey, I'm too busy. Fine by me. Now we have a local resident, Chris, here, who's doing an awesome job. Now, before, uh, before we wrap up, because we've got about a half hour before I'm going to be done. The Bearing of Shadows. The Bearing of Shadows might be the one record in our arsenal where every song can translate to the uh, classical. And the reason for that is that a lot of these started on the classical. Namely... Whoops, wrong string. So a lot of these songs originally started here. <laughs> hey, I'm too busy, but also fuck you. Yeah, that's true, Peter. It could be both. Could be both. Uh, Real Live Reaction says, uh, I heard that I heard that Bell Witch released a collab with Ariel Rune. And if I'm correct, Ariel Rune is an acoustic project whose members work with Bell Witch often. I need to look at that. 
Um, but I'll tell you what, send me a card song and I'll try to make a classical guitar arrangement. Uh, that would be awesome. How do you want me to send you the song? They're all public, so DM me. Let's talk. So a frame of light, obviously. So these ones might be a little bit easier. Um, I already played Snow Sleep. So we could do that. Uh, torch Passing. Oh yeah, that one's just... Um Torch passing would be a little bit... super hard chords. I just had a memory. Check this out. Um, I completely forgot until this moment right now that, um, somebody in, I think they're in Serbia. I think they're in Serbia. They actually did a classical rendition of Beyond Sun and Moon. <laughs> Listen to this.
So what you just heard was Beyond Sun and Moon as reinterpreted by an orchestral composer. I think it's beautiful. Here's the link. I'll send it to you. There's the link if everybody wants to go check that out. Um, it's super badass. Give me one second. All right, and that's going to be it for today's stream. Thanks for hanging out. Super duper appreciate it. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the uh, acoustic stuff, the Kardashev. Just kind of, it's sort of a discussion that I want to start having with everyone to see what the possibilities to reimagine our music on different instruments would be. And I've been inspired in the past by um, this person, I Human, who composed this orchestral score and our own local draw cab. Uh, he's been doing a bunch of piano versions of our music. And so it just kind of makes me wonder what other mediums we could transfer them to. So that was kind of the little exploration today. We've been streaming for about an hour and 20 minutes. I'm going to call it here. I got to go help my dad. And then I'm going to be back on with Tyler in about, uh, in about an hour or so, maybe two hours. We might get some lunch. So if you want to come back for some Never Breath practice, come right back here. And until then, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for hanging out. Sorry for the short stream. I'll be back later.